What's up guys? Today we're going to be checking out the JBL SDP55 processor. The JBL is a 16 channel processor with support for Atmos, DTSX, IMAX Enhanced, Oral 3D, and Logic 16 upmixing. Let's get it unboxed and see what we get inside. Inside we get some documentation, a USB cable, batteries and antenna, remote control, Wi-Fi antennas and calibration mic, and the power cord. Up front is the display with a bunch of callout badges for all the supported audio formats. On the right side is the power button, volume control, selection buttons, 3.5mm headphone jack, and an auxiliary input. Around back are the LAN and USB ins next to the Dante connection. Under that are unbalanced RCA preouts for all 16 channels and a few analog audio ins. There's three HDMI outs with support for EARC, one for Zone 2, and seven HDMI 2.0 ins. On the bottom are 16 balanced XLR outs for all channels, with channels 13 through 16 assignable for either extra subwoofers or additional surrounds. For setup, I'll be hooking up the JBL to a pair of Macintosh amps via XLR cables from AudioQuest. I've got some rhythmic subwoofers and 11 Bowers & Wilkins CT7.4 speakers in my dedicated theater that'll be hooked up to the JBL. I'll be playing some demos using a Kaleidoscape and an Apple TV. To get things going, you'll have to wire up the JBL to your network. Open the settings menu and go to the network to get your IP address. Next, you're going to open a web browser on your PC or iPad and type in the IP address to the JBL. You'll then be taken to the web UI. I'm not going to go over all the options since I've done it many times before, but if you do want to see it, you can check out the review of the RCAM and NAD on the channel. I'm just going to keep this brief and go over the mostly used items. Under AVR control, you can change your volume, turn off the unit, and change your decode mode. Under input configuration, you can change your input, rename your input, adjust your lip sync delay, change your two-channel and multi-channel mode, adjust bass and treble, turn Dirac EQ on and off, change Dolby Audio Processing Mode, change your IMAX mode and your Aural 3D modes, adjust your Auromatic 3D Strength, change your input source options, and turn on and off CD Direct Mode. Under General Setup, you can find your input source information, turn on and off audio compression, change your balance, change your display on time, and change your languages. Under Speaker Types, you can choose between large and small with 10 Hz increments. Speaker distances in either feet or meters, speaker levels, video inputs, HDMI settings for zone 1, settings for zone 2, Bluetooth, and your engineering section. This is where you can reset your device, check for updates, create a backup, change your display type, turn on and off Dante, and turn on and off Control 4. And that's it for the commonly used settings. To get Dirac set up, you will have to download the Dirac software and plug in a compatible mic in a PC or a laptop. Select your microphone and then move on to the volume calibration. You're going to want to get all the levels within the blue area. Next, you're going to choose your listening arrangement. Since it's just me, I chose to focus. Now you're going to measure your first out of 13 spots. Once all the measurements are done, you can check the response curves on the right. You can limit the amount of correction by pulling the curtain over and you can select which group of speakers you want to modify. Once you make any changes, you're going to pick an empty slot, give it a name, and then export the measurement to the processor. Depending on how many speakers you have to measure and how big of a spot you want to measure, it could take up to 45 minutes or even longer. Now that we've spent an hour running Dirac, let's pop in midway and see how the sound is. There's a ton of overhead Atmos effects with a crazy amount of LFE.
As far as hearing sounds moving from channel to channel, the JBL performed flawlessly. Planes can be heard coming from the front stage and flying overhead, disappearing to the left side of the room. The bass when the planes start getting closer to the screen makes you feel like there's a plane steadily approaching. Your subs should be pressurizing your space so much that you can feel it right in your seat. It's exactly how you'd think it sounds. Turning the rack on, the first thing you might notice is that the heavy pressurization isn't as strong. You can still feel it in your seat, but the room doesn't vibrate as much. Dirac seems to have cleaned up the low end and gotten rid of any bloat down low. Now this is probably a personal thing, but for these types of movies, a bit of boom down low makes a big difference. To add a little bit more back in, I ended up giving my subs a little bump by adjusting the curve. Another thing I heard was a lot more clarity up front. With the Dirac turned off, I was hearing tons of effects off to the sides and in the front speakers. With the Dirac on, effects like planes and bullets sounded more focused and distinct. So now, when the plane comes in from the front left surround speaker, flies up to the top front, over to the right top front, then flies off to the right surround, it's a whole lot easier to follow the movement. Whereas before, the effects sounded jumbled and wasn't as clearly focused. Another demo which is very similar to Midway was the Starro attack in the Suicide Squad. In this scene, you should hear the little baby starfish flying throughout the top speakers and scatter throughout the lower channels. Just as we heard with the planes flying in Midway, the starfish definitely had presence with the room correction off and the scene had a large scale soundstage, but the little stars were muddled when they were passing through each channel. Turning room correction on made it sound like you can pinpoint one starfish from another whether it was closer in the left back speaker or more distinct in the top right. So again, more focus and clarity. Bass response was tightened up and less boomy down low, which I know is going to bother some folks, because you want to feel every footstep that Starro takes. Dirac takes a lot of that extension away, so you might have to alter the default curve to get that rumble back, if you want. There's still excellent control for that mid-bass slam, and you'll get nice clean tactile feedback from all the machine guns and buildings collapsing. One more demo I wanted to try out was A Quiet Place Part 2, since it's got a very atmospheric Atmos mix. Obviously, you can't tell how good the surround effects are over a YouTube video, but with and without Dirac, you should be immersed with environmental sounds like birds and insects surrounding you. With the correction turned off, the crickets and the bugs are everywhere and just covers the room. With the correction turned on, I heard the same amount of effects, but now that group of crickets sound like they're coming from the left side of the room rather than appearing to be mixed with the adjacent channel. The background seemed quieter, which also brought out more nuance within the mix that effectively broadens the soundstage, giving the scene more air and spaciousness. At the time of this video, the SDP-55 is $6,000. I found the surround processing to be top notch. For six grand, you really shouldn't be expecting anything less. I'm a fan of Dirac's room correction, and it does bring a ton of focus to these audio mixes. However, I do think some folks may be bothered by how it takes the low-end rumble out of these big action flicks, so playing around with the curve might be necessary, or you could try raising the subs a few dB. I found soundstage, detail, clarity, and how it effectively could make my speakers vanish to be on par with my own Emotiva XMC2. And yes, that one is half the price. Now, seeing as the JBL is basically an Arcam in different clothes, I did find some similar issues that I ran across on both. First being trying to get direct to take a measurement. I normally leave the room while taking measurements so I don't get in the way, so while trying to measure my first spot, I kept getting this error message saying I've got too much background noise. Now, my place is dead quiet, so I didn't know what was going on. 
I go in the theater to check out the mic, and all I hear is this sound. The only way I could get the sound to go away was to keep the TV on. For a $6,000 processor, this is unacceptable. I'd also like to thank JBL for not sending this out for me to review. Maybe this is why. Other little things that bugged me were the test tones sometimes working and sometimes not. I had the same issue with getting the level calibration with Dirac working too. I would just get no test tone. I also noticed if I switched off to an unused input, I would sometimes get this strange sound coming out of my speakers. <laughs> I'll say it again, for six grand, it's unacceptable. These are the same issues I've had on four different Arcan-based processors. I've tried them with different amps, in different rooms, and in different houses, and still had the same bugs. Oh, and let's not forget that on-screen menu. It's garbage. With that being said, when the thing worked, it was a knockout performer. It's not as transparent or three-dimensional sounding as my Trinov, but it sounded just as good and if not better than similarly-based pre-pros that I've had in for review. I'm sure if you can overlook these usability flaws and focus on the sound quality, I'm sure that you'll be more than satisfied. So those are my thoughts on the JBL SDP55 surround sound processor. Have you guys gotten a chance to try one out? And if so, what's your experience been like? Leave a comment and let us know. Now, if you found this video useful, then give it a like. Subscribe if you haven't already, and we'll see you again in the next video.